everyone, Janet here with Radiant Realty. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and stay a while and don't be shy. I love answering your questions, reading your comments, so definitely put those down below and I will take a look at them. It is December of 2021. I can't believe we've made it to the end of this year. I don't know when this video will post, so maybe it's even the new year. And so cheers to 2022. If you haven't already caught my 2022 market forecast, definitely check that out. I went to the National Association of Realtor. They had an online summit and I just shared some of that information there from the experts. So today I just want to say thank you. Thank you to my viewers, my subscribers, those of you that have watched. I've met some of you in person, whether you've become a client or I've just ran into you around town. Just saying thank you. Your videos were so helpful. I want to thank you. You are my viewers and my clients are top notch. You really are some amazing people and I couldn't do what I do without you. So I thought it would be fun at the end of 2021 or beginning of 2022, whatever it is when this posts, to go through, some of you may have noticed I had started a client story series that I was pretty excited about. Bob and Lisa were featured on the first one of those. It was actually their idea. I hopped on board. I thought it was a great idea. However, I had hoped to do that with every client or at least almost all of them because I feel like their stories would be helpful to other people thinking about moving here or selling a home here or whatever it may be. However, some of you, a lot of you surprisingly are camera shy, which is okay. I was too, um, not too long ago, so I understand it. And then also just logistics. Moving is a busy time, whether you're selling a home or buying a home, packing up, starting new jobs, kids in new schools, all of that. It just logistically has not worked out. Additionally, I found out that trying to interview with three people, a couple plus myself, the sound logistics for that, unless you're a sound engineer, which I personally am not, are a little bit trickier. So I thought in this 2021 recap, it would be fun just to go through some of those client stories briefly, very briefly with you. But if you hear any of these and they stand out to you and you want to know more information, definitely reach out to me and I would love to go through that with you. So without further ado, let's get into it. So some of my first clients that I wanted to talk about, Cliff and Margo, they were actually referred to me from a friend. They were very decisive. They ended up doing a new build spec home. It was tough. That was at the top of their price point. They already felt like it was kind of more than they wanted to spend. However, they went ahead with it. She was pregnant, already had had twins and then he was working for a job. He actually got the loan through his own company and right before it was time, probably within the month of completion of their home, he found out they were not going to allow him to work for Montana. So he ended up having to find a new job here after they moved. They still went through with it, but it was a stressful time. And if you have watched my moving to Montana video, I think I said in there, my husband was pretty amazed he didn't have a heart attack just because of all of the details uh, surrounding that. It's, it's tough to move from another state with possibly a job that is up in the air or a pregnancy or anything like that. So kudos to Cliff and Margo. They are loving their new home. They had their babies, so cute and precious. And I sent them a listing last week of a home, a new build right across the street from there, a smaller size, listed over a hundred thousand more than the home that they bought. So I know that they're pretty excited that they got in when they did. And next up we have Casey and Melanie. Casey and Melanie, both entrepreneurs, successful entrepreneurs, they have so many businesses, I can't keep track of them all. Traveling a lot, very decisive. So they started looking, they had a rental here, so they weren't in a huge hurry. However, they knew what they wanted. They messaged me one night, we went out, looked at this property and home. It wasn't quite a match, so that was fine, no problem. They took maybe a month off. They went to Hawaii, they got back from Hawaii and messaged me and they're like, we just got in, we just landed. However, we really wanna see this home. It just hit the market, we think it's what we want. And side note here, a lot of times what people tell me they want and sometimes what they end up with <laughs> is very different. Um, so that's okay. Just know that going into it or sometimes I might send something that's not quite a match just to see what your thoughts are on it. So sometimes people know exactly and sometimes it 
it kind of morphs as we look, but this one, they went, they saw it, they fell in love. It was a beautifully restored historic home, take it apart and rebuilt log by log, and it just meticulously done, perfect for these two. And so of course they fell in love. We knew all bids were due by a certain time and date. We knew it was going to go for over asking. Of course, we didn't know how much for. So they came in strong and thank goodness that they did. They beat out 18 other offers for this house and are pretty thrilled with it. And I'm so happy for them. It is perfect for them and they are loving that. That one is in Big Fork. Cliff and Margo were in Kalispell. So the next one that I wanted to talk about, Bob and Lisa, was also in Big Fork. Now, Bob and Lisa was interesting because they didn't start out wanting a new build. I did the client story with them. If you wanted to look into that, just search my videos and you can meet them in, well, kind of in person, not in person. <laughs> you can put a face with a name for them, but they were wonderful. They came out and things were moving so quickly this spring and summer that we had a list of homes and by the time they got here, almost all of them were under contract. However, one of the homes that they had sent me that was under contract was a new build in this neighborhood. So I reached out to that builder, to the listing agent, found out who the builder was, asked if they had any more builds coming available or planned in that neighborhood. They happened to have this one. So this one is a semi-custom, so the lot was already there. We went out, we looked at that. I scheduled um, just a meeting with that builder when they were in town and they made some adjustments, moved kind of the deck back a little bit and did some other customizations inside. However, after we met with the builder, I did go and we did tour one other home and Lisa was done when she walked in the living room. She's like, nope, I'm in love with that other one. Let's go with it. So it was mostly wonderful. Of course, new builds this year have been a bit tumultuous and the fact that they are finishing late I think they were supposed to close August and didn't close until October. Some of their special items that they chose didn't come in in time. So we had to do a hold back with closing for that, which basically just means the title company is holding some of that money back until those items are installed and completed to satisfaction. So they got in a little bit later than planned. This is a second home, so they haven't gotten to enjoy quite as much time there as they anticipated. But I do definitely want to do a follow up with them as well on that one. So keep an eye out this year for that. Bill and Renee also entrepreneurs were just go-getters. They moved not only their family from another state here, they also moved his business and got an office building secured here. And they bought a home that needed an addition. <laughs> in 2021, they tackled an addition to, and their home, I'm in love with their home. I'm in love with their home's views, everything about it, absolutely gorgeous. But I know probably if you ask them, they're super positive people. So I have followed up and asked how the addition's going. Um, it looks great. However, I know that they have had delays. They have had price increases along with everybody else this year. So doing an addition in this day and age is definitely not for the faint of heart. Doing a custom build, I've heard horror stories of those, definitely not for the faint of heart, but it can be done. And I know they got in their home, gosh, that was early, that was spring. And when we went under contract, they moved in May. However, I'm sure even with all of that headache of the addition, it is worth so much more now than even they paid for it. So great job, Bill and Renee, and I'm so excited for you guys. So Varnell and Tammy, they are fun because they actually followed my channel, my YouTube channel, when I was a travel blogger and I had run into them at the airport years ago. And then I ran into them again here outside TJ Maxx one day and they came up to me and they were like, we promise we're not stalking you, but this is, you know, the situation and we'd love to use you to help us find some land. They were looking for land kind of with an idea of doing some small cabins for rentals and in in the end, like I said earlier, you don't always end up with what you start looking for. They did buy land, but it had a house on it and um, it actually worked out perfect because they still haven't moved here full time yet and they were able to rent that out all summer long as a short-term rental and basically pay for their house payment for the year. And then Varnell is a contractor, so he can uh, work on the cabins this coming spring and summer. I think they plan to rent that house out again this summer, maybe live in an RV or something on the property. And I'm just so excited for them. Tammy said she might become a property manager, which side note, the Valley definitely needs more great property managers and appraisers. So if you're thinking of coming 
struggling and needing a job, that might be one for you. Um, with appraisers, I believe I've heard you have to have a college degree and you have to apprentice under another appraiser for two years, which is why it's kind of a timely level of entry. However, once you get through that, you can basically set your own schedule and make pretty good money. So shout out, we need appraisers, please. <laughs> but I know that Tammy is going to be an excellent property manager. So if you are in need of one, let me know. Um, I definitely have a company that I use currently, but I know Tammy is going to make a great one as well. All right, and next up is Derek and Suzanne. Derek and Suzanne moved from Wyoming. They have a couple daughters as well. Absolutely love this family. She came into town. I went around with her for a day looking at homes. They actually bought a home sight unseen with a virtual tour pulled up and saw and this home needed some TLC it just had not really been kept up for years so they repainted everything they refinished some things and I just walked in she invited me in my last time I stopped by and wow what an amazing job it's a beautiful home beautiful mountain views from that and Derek and Suzanne bought in Columbia Falls and I'm so glad we got them in the home that we did when we did and then there's Bo and Jessica Jessica came into town she was decisive she had we had a list of homes to tour however she had one in mind that she thought we started there it was an empty lot a new build situation and as we went and toured the other suit she, she just knew in her head she's like nope I want that other one so we got back we wrote up a contract we went back and forth for a while making sure that all the customizations they wanted were accounted for and figured out the price with that but that one is in being built as we speak and should be done hopefully in January or February of the new year. And then there's Annette and Bernie. This couple, I love this whole family. So this was multi-generational situation. And of all the families I met, I don't think there are that many that could pull off the multi-generational situation living. However, this family was just so sweet, so loving, so kind to each other. And it was just beautiful to see. So they wanted 40 acres within 20 minutes of the Kalispell Regional Medical Center which is possible we did get it however it is not easy to do to find that acreage that close to town um, but we ended up getting them this beautiful parcel they started trying to get the utilities to it and working on that they've got the well dug it, it went deep <laughs> they had to go deep for that well but I know that they are looking forward to starting building on that in the new year and also um, just a main home maybe an in-law suite and another home for for family members as well. And then Blake and Michelle, they were great because they called, she called me and she wanted to find a place for her children, for her daughter and son-in-law who were getting married. She was so busy. She was sewing, hand sewing this wedding dress for her daughter, amazing. But we got into some bidding wars because with them, we were starting at that kind of entry level here for Kalispell, the three hundred dollars to $400,000 range. She really wanted a downtown home for them so they could walk. So with the downtown homes, a lot of times you end up in bidding wars as well with investors because most of them can be used for short-term rentals. So in the end, we didn't end up with a downtown home. We ended up with a town home on the west side of Kalispell and it was just ready to go. It wasn't brand new but it was like new very few items on the inspection and it's just a perfect starter home for these two and she came into town last week I met her for coffee and she just said how happy she was that she got that home when she did at the price she did and they are absolutely loving it but I will say I was impressed with her. She was from Oregon and she knew the market there and had some friends there. And so she came in strong. She came in so strong, in fact, that I actually had to talk her back a little bit from that offer and say, well, let's look at what else we could get at that price point. Um, but she knew what she needed to do to get it and she did and they got it and she is so happy. And then there's Josh and Becca. Josh and Becca were coming from Tennessee, that Southern charm, they were all with them. They actually started looking pretty early. She says, she jokes about when I talk to her now, I just, you said in one of your videos, it's never too early to reach out. So I reached out and you emailed us back. And I was like, oh my gosh, Josh, she emailed us back. I will email you back if I don't reach out again. It means somehow it slips through the cracks but I definitely try to respond within 24 hours, unless it's a weekend. They started looking early, but they couldn't move because of schooling for their kids. 
And so when they had been looking, Josh found this one in Whitefish that was just on this land, absolutely perfect, his dream home. He was hoping it would still be available. However, it did go under contract. But when they got here and they were finally ready to go look, it came available again. It fell out of contract and we went and we looked. It was kind of at the top end of their budget. But we went in and with this one, we were able to go a little under just because of the situation and that price point that they were at. And of course the sellers countered, but they got it. And it's such a unique home, absolutely beautiful property. It used to be a one room cabin and then it was added onto. And so they did an amazing job with the addition and it's just so unique. And I'm thrilled for them that they got the dream home that they wanted. And then Jeremy and Adriana, Jeremy needed a VA loan and called. And so we did virtual tours only with them and they ended up similar to us, not seeing their home until they pulled up with the moving truck. They ended up buying in Lakeside. Their home has beautiful views that they're enjoying. I think I asked her about the virtual tour and how that went and if she had any feedback for me on that. She said the only thing that didn't show up in that video as well as she would have liked is the incline of the driveway, um, which I mentioned, but that's hard. So I was like, ooh, that's good to know for future. So I know this winter, it's giving her a little bit of a fit coming from <laughs> somewhere else, but she's getting her footing, enjoying those wonderful lakeside views. And I'm so happy that they got into something here as well. And then there's Jerry and Mary. <laughs> I just like saying their names. Jerry and Mary called me and um, they said they kind of wanted a project. She loves to redo things, make them her own. So no matter what we got into, she was gonna wanna do something to it and loved gardening, but she really wanted the views. And so when they visited initially and we started looking, they are in California currently and she was pretty disappointed. She's like, these are like California prices here, which I have heard a lot this year. Um, that is not all of Montana, however, Flathead Head County has jumped so much that I haven't compared it to California, but Californians are saying it's similar. <laughs> so keep that in mind if you are thinking of looking here in the valley. But we spent a full day looking at homes, another day here and there, a few others that they saw, so much so that her neck started hurting her. And they took a break. They actually told me later that they decided to actually do a, a new build with um, somebody that their friend knew that they were staying with. However, that fell through. It didn't work out as they had planned. They contacted me again. We started looking again. I gave some virtual tours. They did lose out on some bidding wars. So that was discouraging, but they were troopers. They stuck it through and ended up with what I believe is the perfect home for them. We have the views, but it's not too far off the beaten path. And it was built in the 90s so it has plenty for Mary to renovate and call her own and make gorgeous inside with the walls of windows overlooking the lake and the mountains. So I know that one's going to be really special for years to come for them. And then Donald and Rita. Donald and Rita, I absolutely love this couple. They are Canadian and they had a condo in Whitefish and it's so funny how this happened. So I called them because I had another client that wanted one of these condos but went in low and we lost out and then he said, and well, somebody else might want to sell. So can you just start calling? So I did because I wanted, I really wanted to get him something. And I talked to Donald and just asked if they might be wanting to sell. And he said, no, no, they didn't want to sell. However, being in Canada, they hadn't been able to come to their condo for quite some time due to COVID. And so a month or so later, I got a phone call and he said, you know, I think we might want to sell that unit. So in the end, and it, it was bittersweet for them because just listening to the stories of when they bought the unit and sleeping in it the first night without furniture and furnishing it and all of that as a couple and then ha having their grandkids there and it was special. And so it was hard, but just the point they are in life, it made sense to sell. So with that one, it was so fully furnished and they were in Canada and I was here. So I had to walk them through. We did FaceTime and we went through every item in that condo unit to make sure which items were included, which items were excluded from the sale. And um, we just made a bill of sale. And of course we had a huge interest in the condo unit and it sold and they were ecstatic. 
and they were able to actually the border opened just in time for them to come and get their items and move on back to Canada and get that all wrapped up before the end of the year. Now, of course, with that one, we had to deal with the international tax withholdings, which was not difficult, but just an extra step to be aware of if you are out of the country. And if you aren't a US citizen, then that's something we need to know and deal with um, in the process as well. So just be sure to make your agent aware of that. And then there's Matthew and Katie. And Matthew and Katie came and we looked at some wonderful houses. Their price point was perfect for what they wanted in Kalispell, not a lot of land. They were at that seven to $800,000 price point. So we were getting to look at some beautiful homes and some with some um, definite unique features. And there was this one that they fell in love with. However, at that point, they weren't quite on the same page about buying or not buying or the timeline for that. And we ended up missing out, which I know they were incredibly sad about. I was sad for them on it. But then they did come around and come together and we ended up getting in, getting them into a beautiful, wonderful home here in Kalispell. And I know they're going to have just many wonderful years with their kiddos there in that house. So, wow, whew, I tried to go quickly through those. There are a few honorable mentions, I'd like to say almost, but not quite client so we had tara and scott tara and scott were doing a 1031 exchange which if you don't know what that is it's basically you have an investment property and you're going to sell that one and buy another one and defer the taxes on that so there are some regulations that need to be followed with that so you definitely need to make your agent aware of that to begin on both sides the sale and the purchase and then also some timeline that you need to follow within identifying properties within 45 days and all these other things so we looked and we actually even put an offer on a property we got that offer accepted however when the inspection came back it just had too many items and they didn't live here and we couldn't seem to get the contractors to come out and even give quotes on them so it's just so concerning for them and we were on that tight timeline so they ended up buying a place in Idaho instead that was turnkey ready to go and at the price point that they needed however they are still looking here to eventually have their forever home here so hopefully we'll still get them over here in Montana at some point point. and then Michael and Cassandra oh my goodness Michael and Cassandra we had under contract on a new build home they'd even made some customizations we had done a zoom call and talked with the builder and they were so excited about this and the the offer the bid that we placed was contingent on the sale of their home and they sold their home in Arizona but then the day before that contingency fell off he found out from his work that they weren't going to allow him to work from Montana and uh, just a word of caution here this is not the first time this has happened the very first one I mentioned with Cliff and Margot he ended up just finding a new job here and that worked out for him. But definitely, even if you think you can work remotely, make sure with your employer that Montana is okay because I felt so bad for them because they had sold their home. They were so excited to move here and then they just had to turn around and buy another home right where they were so he could stay working at that job. And that was just a huge amount of headache and hassle for them for no reason. So anyways, they still have hopes to get to Montana and I am here to help you guys out when you are ready with that. And then there's Lisa and Lou. Lisa and Lou, they wanted to do a multi-generational move as well. And they actually came out and we did put an offer in on a home that her son and son-in-law were incredibly excited about. However, she just, it just didn't feel right to her. So she called me a couple days later and was just so sad, but saying, no, we've got to end this one. <laughs> and so we canceled that contract, got out of it. And then in the end, her son-in-law and daughter couldn't move. They sold their home in California. I don't know where they are at this point. I still see that they're looking at some Montana properties every now and then, but the multi-generational factor there just didn't work out for them in the end. So shout out to you, Lisa and Lou, I hope whatever you get uh, works out and you're happy and just loving family with it. And then there's Lori and Jeff. Lori and Jeff came from Hawaii with their kids and we toured some homes, spent a day touring homes. They were so sweet. They brought me Hawaiian chocolates and a calendar from Hawaii, all these beautiful sunny ocean photos and um, we toured homes, had lunch together, a great day. In the end, I gave them quite a few virtual tours. We had an offering on a place, but at that $400,000 price point, of course, 
they were outbid, unfortunately. That's a tough price point right now, very competitive. And in the end, they decided to hold off on Montana, their Montana dream. She called me this week and just said, Jeff was so heartbroken. But they're going to go to, they did sell their place in Hawaii, so they're going to Washington for the time being and uh, might put that Montana dream on the back burner for a year or two and then we'll see where it leads. So that is all for today. Thank you again for your support, just for your time. I love connecting with you all. If you see me out and about, definitely say hello. Have an amazing week. Have an amazing 2022. Comment below if you make New Year's resolutions. I'd love to hear what those are and I'll see you next time. So as far as 2022 goes, more of the same. I did just take a three-day class on commercial real estate, so I'm excited to learn a little bit more about that. Of course, more home sales, working with buyers, and that's it. So I'm looking forward to 2022 and working with you. Have a great week.